it is an exciting moment. Um, hopefully just a first small step when it comes to, to the UE football. That will take us to a huge jump, hopefully in the future, when it comes to welcoming new audiences to the UE football family. Let me also take this opportunity to say that it's a great pleasure, obviously, to be here and to congratulate, to say Mabruk to all the stakeholders involved, uh, mostly the UAE Pro League, the UAE FA, and of course, uh, Dubai Sports Channels uh, for, for the vision to put this uh, program into, into place. They were reduced to 10 men on minute 12 after uh, Mohamed Al Shamsi, the goalkeeper, being sent off. So they had to climb that mountain, even though against the newcomers uh, all Aruba, they had to cl climb that mountain. Now looking forward, uh, yes, they are the second in the table. They are the closest team to, to the top, to Alain. But the problem for me right now in terms when it comes to Al Wahda is they have the quality, but they will also have a very, very busy schedule on the upcoming weeks. And that might be a crucial challenge for them. Yes, we can call it Kalaba Unleashed. Uh, <laughs> yes, he, he has. He, I think he has 15 goals now. Is yeah. the top goal scorer. Um, I also credit much of the service he's having, the deliveries he's having. Um, Bandar, for example, has been a great partner. Rahimi, Guanka, Kayo, and he's playing. Um, he's getting loads of service. I think. I think. And the overall, the Alain team understood how to play with Lava and how to play for Lava. And he's a prolific goal scorer, so he gets the job done, obviously. What I've seen from Banyaz in this match against Al Wazel was a Banyaz a little closer to the Banyaz we've seen mm. last season, especially defensively. I think the team has improved defensively over the last few weeks. Um, don't forget, they also lost Hassan Al Muharami, uh, the central defender, since the beginning of the season, and that was also a very important player, especially in the back. I believe we only uh, are going to see Fabio again back next season. And it's, it's a massive blow, both for Al Wazel and, as you mentioned, for the UA national team also. Um, he's an amazing player. He can play in any position of the attacking line, open wide on the right side, as a second uh, secondary striker, even on the left side. Mm. Um, and uh, he, it's what he plays is what he assists and what he scores over, over many, many seasons. So, yes, it's a big, big blow for Al Wazel. Igor Jesus. Uh, he suffered a serious mm. injury uh, back in the beginning of the season and um, Shabab al -Ahli was basically left without a striker for the first half of the season due to the fact that uh, also Ahmed Halil could not play um, and that made it very hard for Mahdi Ali, the coach, uh, to, to organize the team, especially in the attack. They had to find different solutions. And when you have a team like Shabab al -Ahli with title ambitions, without a striker, it's a little bit complicated. Yes, you have forwards, you have talented players up front, but you don't have that striker, that man in the box, that goal scorer. They brought Eamon al Ramadi, one of the most experienced coaches ever in our league. So I think that might be an important asset and what is left to play in the Adok Pro League. Of course, they are in a very, very hard situation right now, of course. Um, but again, as, as you said, when you go up against the Emirates club, you have a match because they will fight until the end. Mm. They are a very competitive side. Yes, they have their own style of play. They mostly defend deep and compact in the back and they leave on the counter and they have players to, to, to play under that style and, and they can upset any team. Al Nasser surely has the talent, especially up front. Uh, Tagliabo, despite his age, is still a prolific goal scorer. He's, he has seven goals in the league. He's the second top goal scorer for Al Nasser after Toze with eight. Toze is having an amazing season this season for, for Al Nasser. Diaz Saba is the king of the assists in the league. So, yeah. uh, Ryan Mendes is one of the best dribblers in the league. Just to mention uh, some of the players they have up front. Yes, they have. They have quality definitely up front. Maybe they will need a, a more experienced leader in the back to play side by side with Glauber Lima. Maybe. Um, maybe they would need some readjustments in the back. But I would say up front, they, they, they look amazing. So yeah, uh, it's disappointing. Uh, on the other hand, it's a repetition of what happened in the first uh, in the first uh, round of the Adnok Pro League this season, 
where I was commentating that match and back then Ajman beat Al Nasser 3-0. Yeah. Um, Ajman, a completely different Ajman this season in comparison with the previous seasons. Uh, an Ajman that likes to have more possession this season, likes to play uh, from the back whenever they can. Under Goran Tufajic uh, um, uh, is the coach right now, the Serbian. In the beginning of the season, especially after watching that 3-0 over, over Al Nasser, I even thought they could be the new Banias for this season. I would not go as far as saying that they would come as runners-up because uh, that was not my prediction in the beginning. But I, I thought that they could be involved in the first seven. Of, of the league, uh, somewhere in the top seven. Mm. Um, I think they have what it takes uh, to, to climb a few spots on, on the table, but I would not overrule on that Banyaz also. Especially when we bring on uh, the likes of uh, Al Ahly from Egypt, uh, from Egypt, for example. Yeah. They have a huge fan base. And Palmeiras as well. Palmeiras mm. from Brazil also. Chelsea, of course, is a worldwide brand, a uh, worldwide recognized club. And also our, our own Al Jazeera, why not to mention, uh, the first match 4-1 against AS Pirai from, uh, from Tahiti. And then the second match of the knockout round, uh, heavy loss. We cannot sugarcoat it. It was a heavy loss, 6-1 against uh, Saudi side of Halilal. But in the overall, I, I think it's a great promotion to the country uh, as an organizing country for these types of events, having these high profile sides. As for Jazeera, despite this, this heavy loss against uh, Halilal, I think in the overall, it's one of the most interesting projects when it comes to sports direction right now in the country. Iraq might be uh, the match. And then we still have South Korea home in the, last, in the last match. And South Korea already qualified. Maybe they will not bring their main stars like Son, etc. Mm -hmm. So we have two shots at at least securing three points to take us to the next stage. Tunisian international, uh, and it's an amazing player with an amazing season with Ajman. Last season he played for Fujeda and he already left a perfume of his football uh, in the Adnok Pro League. Uh, this was a weird match, Graham. <laughs> um, Alwazel goes up very early in the match 1-0. Um, it seemed like everything was going their way. To mention that for Alwazel, until this match, this was the longest streak of not losing against Ajman. They had uh, in four games, in the previous four games, three wins and one, uh, one draw. And everything seemed to be going al away, way, and uh, then suddenly everything turned around. This is typical ad hoc pro league uh, action. Blame it on Aloruba, Graham. <laughs> <laughs> I think the, the main problem for Dafra is Aloruba, and also there's a, a problem with Dafra right now. It's, uh, it's ha uh, happening quite a lot. The fact that they get reduced to 10 men many times. A lot, yeah. It hurts them, and of course makes it hard for them, obviously. But it's an amazing finish uh, for, for al uh, They achieve full mark against the Emirates. They won the match back at Al Aruba in the first round 4-2 mm. and now they, they won again at the Emirates. So it's an important, a very important win for them on the road. Again Ali Madan scoring the goal from the spot. A great penalty by the way, well taken. Uh, Ali Madan for me has been the player for Al Aruba this season. Kalba is a good side as we mentioned many times before. Uh, interesting to mention that Kalba's uh, had the longest streak of not losing against Wahda coming into this match. Uh, in the last three matches, they won two. The last two they won and they tied once. Uh, now they lost. Uh, the start of the match seemed to be going Kalba's way with that uh, missed chance uh, 30 seconds into, into the game. But then uh, the quality of, of Al Wahda, especially the front line with João Pedro Carvin and Fabio Martins, uh, an amazing front line, uh, made the difference for, for Wahda. In a match they dominated. Uh, but yes, Kalba gave them gave them a match. Two problems: uh, the absence of of Kozanovic. Uh, it causes a defensive problem. A problem, of course, because he's the leader of the back line. He's the most experienced mm. player, etc. And also causes a problem when it comes to build to the build up. Mm. Uh, Jazeera is a team that loves to have possession. That loves to build from the back. It's their style, especially Coach Kaiser's style. And Kozanovic is a key player in doing so because. He's a left-footed central defender. He has the quality, the experience, etc. Surprise, Graham. <laughs> well, uh, no Laba mm. might have meant no party, but in this case, no Laba, but party for Alain again. Um, efficiency, I believe, was the key in this match. Uh, Al Nasser had many chances. Yeah. Halidisa was was the key. Halidisa. Uh, of course, everyone is focusing on Laba because he's the top goal scorer and he has been amazing this season. But Halidisa 
has made many, many very important, I would say, crucial saves that kept Alain uh, in many matches ahead or at least equalized. Uh, and this was the case. He, he denied an almost certain goal. You even mentioned that uh, throughout the, the commentary to, to Tagliabo, which is not e easy to, to, no. to block. He managed to block that, that situation. Then Al Nasser missed some other chances. And then Alain had, uh, in one of the very few chances they managed to get, they score and they, they, they got to win. The last 13 games, only one time uh, Alain lost against Al Nasser. Uh, it's a huge dominance yeah. of Alain over, over Al Nasser. When Toze broke the deadlock for Al Nasser, 1-0 up, and Al Nasser was dominating the match by then, um, I thought, and I guess many people thought, that things were going Al Nasser way and Dafra would be in trouble, especially because Al Aruba, I believe by then, was also winning against Al Wasl, or at least uh, drawing. So, then it all turned around and Guillermo, he has been a key player for mm -hmm. Dafra in the second half of the season, uh, scored uh, a brace, uh, Dafra came back, Dafra managed to keep things uh, like that until the end of the match and these three points might be crucial for, for Dafra uh, in the end of the day. Mr. Mohamed Abdelhassan, he will be uh, a referee for the World Cup representing the UAE. Also, we will have two uh, assistants mm. from, from the UAE, Mr. Mohamed Al Hamadi and Mr. Hassan Al Mahri. Uh, they will be representing the country in the World Cup. In any case, a German coach coming into to the league uh, and coming into Al Nasser. Let's see if he can turn uh, yeah. things around for, for the Bulls. Herben, Pedro and Martins have scored 74% of the Al Wahda's 47 goals coming into this match. Now there's also this match, maybe it has increased a little bit. Uh, yes, the front line has an amazing chemistry, of course. They are fed by Adrian Silva, by Ismail Matar, which helps a lot, but many credits to them. Alain is flying, Graham. Uh, they are not playing on the pitch. They are playing a few inches <laughs> above the pitch. That goal from Laba just went all the way. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. uh, Guanca's goal looked like a futsal goal. He was dribbling everyone inside the six-yard box. Uh, another hit and run by Alain, mostly. Um, even though Ajman uh, resisted quite well till the second goal, and uh, then after the second goal, I felt, I felt like they crumbled a little bit. They, they went down and, uh, and then Alain, of course, uh, kept going, yeah. kept going, kept going. And somehow, at least lately, he's working out pretty well, even though I would not rule out the fact that they had Olsen, uh, yeah. Kartavia, and also Amuri, even though Amuri was there already, but was not available, joining the team. And uh, I believe that made uh, a huge difference in this uh, second half of the season, especially lately over the yeah. last uh, couple of months or so. They have good players. Yeah. Uh, also, hopefully next season from the start, they will have again back the central defender, Hassan Al Muharami, which is a very good mm. uh, central defender, a left-footed central defender, usually called up to the UAE national team. But yes, um, it's very, very complicated for them right now. Uh, they are not going through through the best of times. Historical win for Horfahan because in the previous three times they met for the Pro League, Kalba won all the three matches. So this is uh, an historical win for Horfahan. Um, interesting also that Kalba played in a slightly different model in this match with uh, both Peni Almalap and Sultan mm. Adel uh, in a more central position, especially Sultan Adel. He usually is dropping uh, more to, to, to the wings, mostly the left side. Shabab al -Ahli, if they manage to continue this momentum that they somehow built over the last few rounds, for the next season with some adjustments they can and they mm. should be a player and then let's not forget the two giants from dubai al wazel and, uh, and al nasser uh, with the history and the weight they have on the league hopefully they will do better next season and they will be somehow competing uh, slightly up, up up in the table australia as far as i can tell uh, would be more in the reach of uh, of the uae right now Peru, it will be a much bigger challenge if it comes along. And in any case, it's a single leg knockout, so the UAE has a good shot. The fact that they kept the coach all the way, uh, my hat is off and my respects for, for them. Uh, and the way they played over the last few rounds, um, we all had mm. the, the idea that they could, it could be a fairy tale. Mm. Uh, and they were very close in the end to, to, get, uh, to get that. This was the most tense match, of course, of, of the round. And uh, yeah, the way they played, the way they fought over, over the last few rounds especially, 
um, we had we had that idea that we might be seeing here something unusual. As Matt said, they were below the relegation uh, line all the way through the last match, and eventually in the last match they could have done it. Badr Idrisi, the, the, the mm. coach, that was the third coach in the season for Dafra, mm. also kind of got them together, uh, glued them, and the team from then on not only kept defending well, because Dafra uh, throughout the season uh, having in mind that it's a team that fights for to avoid relegation was always a team that somehow managed to defend well the thing is after these signings and after coach Badr Idrisi uh, to, to be on board and to be managing the team the team improved also a bit in the offense mm. and start to be more threatening it was not just Diop plus the others it yeah. was mm. Diop plus Guillermo plus Lucas and even Al Janabi open wide on the wing then uh, Wally Dunbar uh, help them to improve up front and uh, in the end I think that made a difference for them. Mm. Definitely a top goal scorer with six goals, um, mm. uh, many many presents, uh, was the most used uh, player throughout the season. Mm. He's a legend of the club, he's mm. a legend I would say of the league. Definitely. Uh, yeah, yeah, he definitely. also played for Al Ahly uh, mm. back, uh, back a few years uh, ago. Uh, I would say yes, they can offensively mostly uh, build pretty much around him. He seems also to be a good leader. Uh, and that is important and also important uh, when it comes to defensive set pieces namely corners and, and free kicks where he usually stay, hangs around the, the near post to clear out if you allow uh, Matt I would call it the Tagliabu Derby <laughs> <laughs> since it was the, 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 between the two teams he, he represented so far in the UAE even though he was not present in, the, in this one it was an open match four goals um, Wahda slightly better but uh, Al Nasser also played a good match in the end Al Wahda was still somehow fighting for a possible second place. They can build up on this. Wahda historical, uh, historically in the league has not been uh, pretty much a competitive side, even though they are an historical side of the UAE. They have not been competing for the league title most of the times. So they need to first, I believe, to start competing like they did for, for a good part of the season and then build up on that to eventually achieve the league. And this Alain was a very strong Alain, so it would always be very hard uh, to, to keep up with them. In any case, I think Omar Kherben was, in my opinion, uh, the key player of, of the season. Mm. João Pedro, very good. Fabio Martins, also very good open wide. I would say he was a kind of a Shukurov for, for, uh, for Al Wahda mm. because it's a player that I admire a lot and somehow does the, the same kind of, of, of linking between mm. the defensive line and the attacking line, even though Adrian is a bit uh, more offensive uh, than, than Shukurov. Also long range shots, uh, assists. So he did pretty well for himself. It was an irregular season for Al Nasser, no doubts on that. I would blame a little bit the defensive part of it. They scored 42 goals, but they conceded 38. So mm -hmm. it's, it was pretty even. I would say they have interesting young talent as central defenders, mostly Glover. Mm -hmm. I would say they need a Sharif like Kozanovic from Jazeera. Mm. I would say they need a, an experienced central defender there in the back to coordinate things, to provide some experience and to lead them from the back. I think the, the problem is from midfield uh, to the back to somehow compose uh, a defensive system with more experience uh, there. I think it was, uh, for example, even the Asaba, I agree with you, he was good at times, but sometimes he was not completely there. Yeah. A little bit same with the Ryan Mendes. Mm. And they should be, in theory, the main providers for Tagliabu. So there was lots of things, uh, small and big details, that missed out for Al Nasser. But now with the new coach, the German Thorsten Fink yes. coming in, we might be seeing a, a different Al Nasser for better next mm. season. I think Al Wazel was more efficient uh, defensively and also offensively, but I think they played a good match. Again, 70% of possession for Jazeera in average, as usual. They like, they love to keep the ball. It was not very good and it was not very bad. Uh, mm. It was lukewarm, okay? Um, defensively, uh, Al Wazel had pretty good performances. I couldn't believe the stats. Especially, <laughs> especially if you have in mind, if you compare with previous seasons where usually Al Wazel suffers in the back. Hmm. Al Wazel defensively, they managed to get 11 clean sheets. So that's uh, a plus. Offensively, this is where I believe they came short. And uh, this is what somehow stopped them uh, from going a bit further. Uh, I would not say as much as fighting for the title but going a little bit higher on the table. Uh, in the end, I think uh, Ali Salah had a very good season Excellent and season. kind of 
is a rising star right now. He was already, but now he's becoming more established in the team and emerging as, as a, a constant talent in every match. Um, the, the, the players that came from abroad, Michel, Ramiro, Adrielsen, and even Gilberto, the striker, mm. Uh, with my opinion, I, I believe he might be a good fit for Al Wazel, even though, okay, he might not be exactly in the same level as Lava or João Pedro, but I think he might be a good fit for Al Wazel. I think this is where Al Wazel needs to focus for, for the next season, especially in the offense, uh, eventually having a different setup. And let's not forget that Fabio Lima yeah. was absent for at least half of the season. And again, Horfahan is a team with good players individually, but never got. Uh, together as a unit uh, throughout the season. I think they can climb a few spots, uh, Graham, to be honest. I if they manage uh, to keep some consistency, because unlike, uh, for example, Calva, their neighbors, or even Ajman this season, they change coach three times. Mm. So that's a little bit too much, especially having in mind that this particular season, eight clubs did not change their coach. But then we had some clubs like Horfahan, Dafra and Emirates that changed the coach three times. They had three different coaches throughout the season. When they lost Igor Jesus and uh, uh, Ahmed Khalil was also not ready, they kind of lost the attacking reference. That was the first blow. Carlos Eduardo was never at his best level until he left the club. Amuri was not available. I think just these two positions, the 10 position and the 9 position, kind of made it very hard for them, especially in the offense. Yes, this match, Graham, perfectly fits in uh, my personal motto for, for the Adnok Pro League. Everything and anything can happen. <laughs> so you get a team that is reduced to 10 men minute one, then they, they get into eight men after two, two more uh, play, two players being sent off. In the end, eight men, they finish, they finish the match. Let me tell you about the Emirates. Gnado and mm. Letieri uh, and Walid Sabar were also players that uh, mm -hmm. I enjoyed watching. Uh, Ajman, yes, Ben Alarbi was clearly, for me, the best player. And let's not forget, uh, forget about Spadaccio. Uh, Trawali left uh, mm. a few weeks back and he was also good. And Miral, Miral Samarzic, the, the defender, I think, again, uh, we were talking about uh, Al Nasser. Uh, it would be a player like this, with this kind of profile, that would be helpful to join. And it was amazing for Ajman. They defended much better this season, also because of Samarzic in comparison with the previous season. They managed uh, to, to be on top of most of the rankings when it comes to, to the statistics, uh, goals. Uh, the, the defensive performance, I think it's key. Mm -hmm. usually, historically, usually the best defense usually is the defense of the champion. We have some consistency in some clubs and eight clubs did not change their coaches. I think this is something that we can bring forward. And if we can build up on this consistency, uh, we might have a good season, despite the fact, as you mentioned, that in terms of scheduling, we mm. don't know what's, what's ahead of us. Halas, thank you. Uh, shukran. <laughs>